Everyone loves a game of hide and seek. In fact, I'm so good at it, once my friends didn't find me for three days, and then I found them all hanging out and laughing, and they'd completely forgotten we were playing. <laughs> Jokers. But sometimes in games, our hiding places are spectacularly unsophisticated, and yet we're forced to squeeze into them time and time again to reach our goal or save our hides. That's despite the fact that these are, categorically, the worst hiding places in the whole world. Seriously, why wouldn't the first place you look be the wriggling person-sized box? Here are some of the most conspicuous hiding spots in games we can't believe your enemies didn't think to look. Along the way, beware spoilers for the following. To be a skilled assassin, you must be as difficult to find as a needle in a haystack. <coughs> I, um, th that's not quite what I meant, but okay. A staple in the Assassin's Creed series is the ability to use a hay cart as a convenient hiding place to avoid the local guards, who are all trying to chop off your kneecaps. From the market towns of Jerusalem to the dark streets of Victorian London, these piles of hay, or sometimes leaves, offer sanctuary to any nearby assassins in need of a quick getaway. Despite the fact that if you saw a man-sized pile of this stuff in real life, you'd be pretty suspicious, right? Or at least you'd be tempted to dive in yourself, which would be pretty awkward for both you and the concealed assassin. Oh, there's already someone in this hay. Don't worry, I'll bail. Boo! Boo! The fact that you can just leap into a stack of dried foliage to avoid detection isn't the least ridiculous thing about this series' mainstay. Consider, for instance, how they're all placed right underneath tall landmarks to break your fall, as if that's something the human spine can handle. Or the way that guards refuse to learn about this commonly used hiding place, with most of them wandering right past and only occasionally having a poke if they happen to be one of the few guards issued with a long stick. Since most guards have no idea of the dangers lurking within these grassy death traps, they helpfully stand next to them, facing the other way, until an assassin rustles over and drags them in to meet their demise. <laughs> I mean, come on, they must have heard them get in the hay, and then why can't they all have the big pointy sticks to check for assassins? You guys need to unionise, I don't know, form some kind of brotherhood. Wait. Huh? Just a box. Now, I'm not saying that the guards, soldiers, and other military personnel that you encounter in the Metal Gear series are stupid, but... Actually, looking at the script for the rest of this section, that is exactly what I'm saying. This isn't even a script, it's just the word stupid written all big. Stupidity is the only thing that would explain why a cardboard box is such a fantastically effective hiding place. Sure, you could forgive it if you were hiding in a cardboard box surrounded by other cardboard boxes, but when it's a cardboard box on its own, in the middle of nowhere, you'd think that'd be the sort of thing that would arouse suspicion. Just a box. And that's why you're not a guard in a Metal Gear game, because that shit is just A-OK -okay on this military base. Even if the box is moving when you're not looking at it like a Doctor Who villain. In what is surely a case of Snake seeing exactly how much he can get away with with these idiots, Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain ups the box ante by letting you use boxes that have images printed on them. Instead of blowing your cover immediately, because look at this, it's like the standees you get at the cinema, these military geniuses will instead salute a cardboard box with a soldier printed on it. And fall in love with a box that has a picture of a sexy lady on it? Jesus Christ, guys. I might not actually Fulton recover any of these guys back to my base. You can keep them. Now, look, you can't expect too much from the bad guys in Zelda. One of them is literally just a skull on fire. But even the least sophisticated of Ganon's minions should feel ashamed not to have seen through Link's hiding place in The Wind Waker. In this game, our big-eyed hero breaks into the ominous Forsaken Fortress, a precision op that begins like every great infiltration, with you being fired towards the target out of a catapult. To be fair, that's how they do it in the SAS. It says so in this SAS manual, which I bought off eBay, and I'm now realising is written entirely in crayon. That said, stowing Link in a barrel for the catapult bit was inspired, as identical casks can be found littering every surface inside the Forsaken Fortress, and it's these that Link hides inside when he's stealthing his way to glory. Mm. 
Now, to be fair, we don't know what the operators of these searchlights were told to specifically look for, so maybe something that wasn't there just 10 seconds ago just wasn't mentioned in the briefing notes. But we can't imagine what excuse these Moblins will give to Ganon for not detecting the link barrel creeping unsubtly past their patrols. I mean, come on! Guessing the Forsaken Fortress benefits package doesn't include free eye tests. Good dental though. Just look at those pearly whites. Possible. For guards in the perpetually dicey Empire of the Isles, situational awareness is critical, so they should be checking around themselves at all times, including up. In Stealth Assassin's series Dishonored, however, not only can you avoid the guard's eyes by standing directly behind them and taking them out with a chokehold, <laughs> but you can also avoid them by being ever so slightly above them at all times, which is an easy task if you use one of the many traversal void powers, such as Corvo's blink ability and Emily's far reach. Yes, by sticking to the rooftops and the occasional lamppost, you can keep out of the sight of guards on ground level who refuse to look too far up, presumably in case they catch the sight of the stars and are forced to rethink their life choices, or maybe in case their backs give out. For real, not being able to look directly up is a health warning sign, and there are a lot of plagues going around right now. I mean, instead of gathering for whiskey and cigars every night, perhaps you should go and see one of the last doctors left alive. Even if you stick to ground level, they aren't much better, as crouching behind corners or in bins also seems to keep you easily out of harm's way. But honestly, why hide in a dumpster when you can be on the rooftops of Dunwall, away from the rats and the walls of light, breathing in the sea air and the fresh smell of burning whale oil? Whoa. Admittedly, you're not invulnerable up there, and should the smell cause you to fumble and make a racket, the guards will eventually think to look up, shooting and chucking things in your direction. Basically, you're good as long as you avoid people on balconies and recreating the Step in Time musical number from Mary Poppins. Ellen, just want us to go over some of these steps, because some of the chorus line sweeps have been saying No, that no, no, Lutely, we're not doing that anymore, it's too noisy, it'll attract too much attention. Supercalic Survival horror games generally create tension by giving you three bullets and a sharp stick and wishing you good luck. So it was a big relief that the Evil Within gave you the option of hiding from your enemies. Especially since the concept of hiding seemed to be completely alien to the zombies in the game. Unlike in, say, Friday the 13th, where hiding in a closet is a surefire way to get murdered in a closet, climbing into a wardrobe or under a bed in the Evil Within means you'll be left alone from now until the end of time. This is all while the confused monster outside the wardrobe tries to piece together the sequence of events that started with you running into an exitless room with a wardrobe in it and then vanishing into thin air, like the world's thickest Jonathan Creek. Eventually, they'll conclude that Sebastian probably evaporated like steam and will never return, at which point you can sneak up behind them and stab them in the brain. Although that might not actually do the trick, Seb. That brain's got to be a pretty small target. Let's try and stay calm. It's going to be okay. We're in control. Joker's planned it all. For a big guy, Batman's a dab hand of the old sneaking routine. I mean, with shoulders this broad, you'd think it'd be tough enough just entering a room without knocking over a side table, and yet the world's greatest detective has no trouble sneaking up on the thugs of Gotham without making a peep. Of course, Batman relies heavily on technology to help with his silent bone snapping. The grapnel gun, for instance, allows him to swing quietly around the rafters without alerting his foes. 
while futuristic detective vision lets the Dark Knight keep track of his enemies from afar, even behind walls or through floors. But these are mere toys compared with Batman's most frequently used gadget, an ordinary commercial air duct. I mean, we say ordinary, but there's nothing that's usual about the ventilation systems that Batman depends upon to stealth around his enemies. For one thing, they tend to be wide enough to fit the world's broadest shoulders with a little wiggle room to spare. And despite the fact that they're only designed to transport air, even the ones suspended in walls are apparently strong enough to bear the weight of a bodybuilder carrying an additional 100 pounds of military-grade hardware. Come on, find him! It's just an old room full of books! How hard can it be? If only they'd made the walls and gates of Arkham Asylum out of this stuff, maybe Gotham wouldn't need a man dressed as a bat clambering around the vents. Ever think of that, Gotham City planning? What's even stranger than Batman's magic vents is the fact that none of the bruisers hunting you think to peek inside, despite the fact that Batman is basically always clanking around inside them, before hopping out for what Bruce Wayne's lawyers would insist is a technically non-lethal takedown. Seriously dude, how did you not hear that coming? And Batman's been using the vent pounce trick for years now? Maybe don't stand right next to that grating if you don't want your limbs shattered. Don't freak out. We can handle this. Oh, too late. But at least let the other criminals know for next time, eh? Maybe pop a note in the goon WhatsApp chat. Batman using the vents, FYI. Broke my bones. Sad emoji. Oh. Dogs. And... Agent 47 is a highly trained killer who can assume any number of disguises. I mean, I could be Agent 47 right now and you'd never know. Well, I mean, you're not bald. Oh, yeah. Still, not all of 47's disguises are perfect, with certain people able to see through them when they recognise him as someone definitely not on the staff list. Uh, who are what? you again? Can you believe this prick? Who does he think he is? Get spotted in the wrong place and everything goes to hell in a handbasket, meaning you have to ditch that outfit sharpish or scarper. One disguise that Agent 47 will never be spotted in, however, is the wardrobe of his victims. No, literally, like, in the wardrobe. Unbelievably, unless someone spots you going in, security in the area will simply not think to check a hiding spot that would perfectly fit a fully grown assassin and all his guns, and is famously the first hiding place anyone would pick in a hurry. Okay, what is that? And that's not to mention the assassin-sized wooden crates lying around several places where your targets reside. It's the perfect hiding spot, not only for you, but also for any dead or unconscious bodies you happen to produce on your mission, letting you stash the bloody evidence of your crimes safely out of the way, cementing your reputation as the deadliest assassin. In that you're also going to kill the cleaner the next day when they find the mess and die of shock. Luke, we can see you. Luke, come on, that's the worst hiding space of all. Look, could you tell people what to click on now? Yeah, no, come on, there's, there's two videos. That's it, well done. And now could you tell people to subscribe? Come on, Luke. Thank you. 